So I'll be taking through this uh, webinar on battery management system. So without further delay, we will start this session on the uh, battery management system. So, so the main content of this uh, webinar will be the cells and batteries. So we will be discussing the difference between the cells and batteries, which we come across in our day-to-day -day life. And uh, specifically, uh, the second topic, we will deal with the lithium ion batteries. So we will discuss about uh, the advantages and different uh, properties of the lithium ion batteries and their like uh, applications. And next, we will move to the battery management system, the complete architecture and the functionalities involved. And most uh, importantly, so what is the need of the battery management system for lithium and battery packs? And also, we will discuss on the a small case study, like uh, we will uh, discuss on the battery management system design, the electrical aspects and uh, the system integration of the battery management system and at the end we will discuss uh, what is the industry scenarios for the batteries and the vms in current uh, uh, scenario and current uh, applications and also we will talk about a few job roles and opportunities in the different industries like automotive industries and telecom industries okay so this is the uh, content of the webinar for today so yeah so let us begin with the cells and batteries so cells are nothing but the smallest individual chemical unit so this is a, a smallest individual of the complete battery pack and uh, which delivers a voltage that depends on the cell chemistries so we will see different uh, cell chemistries and uh, their voltage levels and uh, their advantages and disadvantages so when i say the batteries or a battery pack so so this is a made up of group of cells connected in series and parallel combination so as you can see in the image so the individual battery cells battery or cells so the cells are as i said it is a smallest unit which will have a voltage uh, individual voltage on the across the battery cell so battery packs holds a series of cells which adds up all the voltage of the individual cells and makes a a pack voltage so that is the difference between the cell and the batteries coming to the lithium ion batteries so the current uh, market demanding for highest uh, energy density uh, for its uh, applications so lithium ion batteries are uh, having the highest energy density compared to the other legacy lead acid nickel cadmium or metal hydride so in terms of if you see the graph over here so it has uh, highest energy density per kg so, so even the markets are demanding for uh, lightweight battery packs electric vehicles or even for uh, dynamic uh, major uh, advantage of uh, lithium batteries and uh, the second most uh, important uh, property of the lithium battery is the higher voltages available compared to other uh, chemistries so suppose if i take the nickel metal hydride, right though it has a higher energy density and it's a lightweight but uh, still the voltages are very less so if you see nickel metal hydride right, it is somewhere the nominal voltage will be 1.2 so whereas the in lithium ion batteries uh, so we will have a 3.2 volts or 3.6 volts so this will uh, drastically reduce your number of cells uh, required to make your battery pack for a, a particular system voltage so this is what uh, driving the lithium and market and current scenario for most of the uh, electric uh, powered applications specifically in electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles as well as in telecom market so also it has a self discharge rate compared to other chemistries so this will make it suitable for uh, static applications where it will have a more shelf life and also it has a long life the warranty part of it so it gives a more durability to the system so this is about the the batteries lithium ion batteries and their advantages so next uh, uh, we will have a comparison comparison of lithium ion chemistries as i said we have different uh, chemistries like lfp chemistry nmc chemistry and uh, lco mn lmo and LTO. So, if you look at the different uh, properties or the characteristics of the chemistries, such as voltages, voltage level, the nominal voltage level of the battery chemistry, and uh, 
the cost and the application application of the batteries and its start discharge uh, rates and uh, voltage levels so if you compare uh, the lfp and nmc so other chemistries are slightly expensive and uh, you know those uh, application are like in the mobile phones and uh, laptop tablets so that goes into those applications and uh, if you see lfp and nmc we have uh, different uh, applications such as e bikes and uh, evs and for industrial purpose and also for the telecom applications and uh, specifically for lfp chemistry is more uh, you know uh, used where you need a very high current requirements or pulse current requirements for the applications so also if you see this uh, cycle life like uh, the number of uh, charge or discharge cycles so for lfp it is uh, very high and uh, for nmc it is 1000 to 2000 uh, so which makes this uh, compatible for uh, most of the uh, e-bikes and uh, other ev applications okay so this is uh, related to the comparison of uh, lithium and chemistries so, so the most important part of this seminar is uh, when a bms is needed so basically the lithium and batteries uh, require a bms uh, for the safety purpose so this is the main purpose of uh, having uh, the bms for the lithium and battery packs and uh, you know and so there are uh, there's also a cost associated with the bms so it is the application which decides uh, like uh, what is the um, uh, features that a bms has to have so so if you see a, a smaller battery a lithium ion battery so which cost few cents a few dollars so 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 this whether so based on this whether the application requires a bms feature what are the features that requires uh, uh, into the bms so so that has to be uh, decided based on the cost of the system so if you look at the bigger battery packs you know uh, which has uh, more uh, financial in investments and uh, and this demand for more more and more robust uh, bms to be implemented so some of the examples applications so that requires i you know the robust uh, uh, bms is the uh, for vehicular applications such as uh, the electric vehicles like e-bikes or electric vehicle uh, four-wheeler or a grid storage backup uh, for a telecom grid telecom tower purpose and uh, you know uh, the requirement of the bms in the application so the question now is uh, so why the bms is required okay so so the main purpose of uh, uh, the battery system is to provide uh, safety to the uh, the operator uh, who is using the system so the main the functions uh, or the main basic functions which uh, involved for the uh, bms is to uh, detect the unsafe operating conditions so by uh, detecting these unsafe operating conditions so you can maximize utilization of the battery as well as you uh, keep the battery operating in safe conditions and also it, it has to protect the uh, battery from damage uh, during abuse or failure cases so this is one of the safety requirement for any system and uh, also by operating in the normal condition so you are actually increasing the life of the battery and uh, uh, usage of the uh, system also the maintain the battery in state which it can fulfill functional design requirements and uh, you are deciding how to make uh, the best use of the battery pack right now like what is the power limit you can choose or the what is the control charger when to control chargers so, so such uh, decision will be made by battery management system so the unsafe operating conditions for the battery are defined by the battery manufacturer so those has to be taken care in the battery management system so coming to the battery pack modules design so as i said so there are different uh, combination in which the batteries can be connected so one is the parallel cell modules uh, so where you are uh, connecting the each cells in parallel and uh, thereby you are increasing the the total capacity of the battery uh, pack and the second thing is the series cell modules so in series cell module uh, you are connecting the cells in series 
let us say you are connecting uh, 14 cells in series to make a 48 volt system and you have a parallel uh, cells means three uh, three cells in parallel the capacity of the battery to three times and uh, so and so it is uh, recommended to use identical cell modules into the design so the battery packs which you connect in series or parallel uh, should be of uh, identical uh, chemistry and with the identical characteristics to maximize the performance of the battery so this is about the, the battery pack module design so these battery pack modules are further are a bigger system which requires a very high uh, power uh, for the application so so let us come to the betterment system architecture so in the industry we see uh, uh, most commonly used uh, architecture so there are two architecture one is the centralized and hierarchical uh, so these two architecture uh, can be implemented based on the, the system needs okay so the centralized architecture where uh, you have a single uh, battery pack or a, a single battery module and uh, so you will be controlling uh, particular the, the battery operations the battery controls using a single control unit whereas in hierarchical architecture bms architectures so you will be uh, connecting the series of bms modules or we call it as a uh, battery uh, monitoring units so you'll be connecting in uh, different battery monitoring units and uh, controlling or monitoring the entire battery pack for with a single uh, master um, bms and the master BMS will be again controlling the, the cutoff of the uh, different uh, contactors or monitoring the cells, individual cells, and also comparing the, and also taking decisions and also running an algorithm uh, to calculate the battery SOC and SOH uh, parameters. So, so as I said, the battery monitoring unit is uh, basically a sensing and balancing unit. Uh, so it will be sensing the cell voltages, cell temperatures, and uh, you know the, the balancing of the uh, individual cells, and uh, there will, thereby it will be a completely an analog module, and it will have a, a SIC uh, which will be uh, running the ADC engine to uh, sense these voltages, and uh, there is a single master uh, BMS unit uh, for the pack. Uh, which will be uh, taking the information from the battery uh, monitoring units and uh, also the uh, the control of the contactors uh, which will be you know uh, controlling the battery positive and uh, negative switches and uh, also it is uh, communicating with the uh, battery monitor monitoring unit as well as to the uh, external control units such as uh, you know uh, the vehicle control unit in case of an e-bike or uh, electric uh, four-wheeler so this uh, master bms is the you know brain of the complete battery management system uh, which will be controlling the entire battery pack operation uh, whether to allow the current to flow or to keep the battery in very low power uh, mode so also the efficient and uh, robust master and slave communication and that has to be integrated uh, within the uh, bms uh, where we have uh, both um, sensing unit and uh, master bms so this uh, entirely uh, constitute a battery man management system uh, as an architecture uh, so i just explained you uh, so so uh, so now uh, uh, let us discuss on the uh, functions uh, so that has to be uh, you know satisfied by a, a battery management system uh, so uh, so as i as i said uh, the bms um, uh, basically uh, interconnects with uh, uh, battery components uh, such as uh, the uh, each uh, cell 